I am Leonard Patterson. When I was a young man, only 23 years old, I joined the Communist Party. I was a member of the National Executive Committee of the American Young Communist League. In 1930, I was the official Communist candidate for election to New York State Assembly. I knew Gus Hall and other top-ranking American Communists very well because I trained with them at the Lenin University in Moscow. I joined the party because I honestly thought the Communists were trying to help American Negroes. I broke away from the party when it became clear to me what the Communists were really up to was to use the Negro people in this country in a violent and bloody revolution aimed at the establishment of the American Soviet dictatorship. It was that simple and it is still that simple today. Make no mistake about it. What is happening in the United States right now under the banner of civil rights is exactly what has happened in China, in Cuba, in Algeria, and many other places around the world. When I was studying communist technology in Moscow, my instructors emphasized the importance of using honest grievances and popular slogans as a smokescreen to cover up the true nature of the revolution. We were taught how to use propaganda and arouse the emotion of the masses. We learn how to set one group against the other and to make them hate each other. We learn the necessity of having martyrs. And we were even told how to create our own martyrs if they did not imagine the result from the atmosphere of hatred. We were taught the importance of getting large masses of people into the street for marches and demonstrations. And finally, we were instructed in ways to take off riots and make them spread and to keep them going. When I returned to the United States, I was immediately given practical training. I participated in so-called nonviolent demonstrations that were deliberately calculated to irritate white people and to violence against us. I personally was in charge of organizing a march on Washington to dramatize the Scottsboro Boys case. In New York, about 1935, a Negro boy was reported killed by the owner of a store while in the act of stealing some merchandise. Communist Party headquarters decided to make a march out of the boy. So we went right to work, putting out handbills and holding open air meetings. In less than a half hour after we started, there was a race right on the front of street, complete with smashing wonders of white storekeepers, looting and all the rest. I'm not speaking of things I read about. These are things I personally participated in. Yes. We were taught how to use propaganda, how to arouse the emotion of the masses. We learned how to set one group against the other and to make them hate each other. We learned to be set to having martyrs and were even told how to create our own martyrs if they did not automatically result from the atmosphere of hatred. Divide the people, then create the appearance of popular support. And if any of the alert, informed citizens call attention to the true revolutionary goals behind the humanitarian slogans, move into phase three and neutralize the opposition. One effective way to neutralize any opposition is to liquidate it. In the summer of 1965, a respected Negro farmer in Alabama dared to speak out critically against the civil rights revolutionaries. In this cabin in late August, 87-year-old Perry Sma struggled with an assailant who said he had come to get Perry's tongue. The aged Negro's skull was crushed with a cast iron frying pan. The attacker striking with such force that the skillet was broken. Then the intruder pulled Perry's tongue from his mouth and with a butcher knife cut it off all the way back to the old man's tonsils. Perry Smaw 
The man who dared defy the conspirators died six days later.